Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm coming to you with an honest and raw video. I'm going to be sharing my Brent Notebook collection as well as my Project Pan series for this year. I am going to be changing the name and it is now going to be called my Zero Stash Project and I will get into my reasons later on in this video. But I just wanna say that this is a scary video for me to do. I feel a little vulnerable. So I just kindly ask you to please watch this video with an open heart and an open mind because I'm not really used to opening up online like this. And now here I am just owning up to my actions and what it has led to for me. So this is all of my blank notebooks. So I did count all of the blank notebooks I have in my stash and I counted it several times just to be sure. And the number that I got was not very good. I don't like it at all. And I have, as of 2023, 76 blank notebooks. And that is a lot for me. I know there are videos out there of people having over 100 blank notebooks and that is great. I love watching those videos. I like to live vicariously through those videos. But for me, I realized that this isn't where I wanna be. I don't want to be keeping a stash of unused items in my house. We moved to a new state last year and that just forced me to confront all of the material items that I own and I didn't like that feeling. I felt burdened and that's not the kind of person that I want to be. I want to live a simpler life. I don't want to feel burdened by my things. And I have been going on a declutter, de-stash journey since our move, but 2022, I still wasn't very perfect at it. I did significantly decrease my spending last year, but there were still moments where I was spiraling. But this year, 2023, I am determined to go on a low buy. Going forward, I'm not going to buy any stationery up until July. And I did choose July as my cutoff date just because that's my birthday month and I also have a big event planned for July. So just six months. I do have a couple of allowances for my low buy. I did write down my allowances in my journal before I officially started. And I did say that I'm allowed to buy the Multerm Veg Tan Plum in Personal Lux and Pocket Lux. So I did order the Personal Lux when it released mid-January, but now i'm not sure if i'm gonna get the pocket lux i am kind of on the fence about it now just because i'm not using pocket rings at the moment so i'm probably not going to be buying anything until july and i'm perfectly fine with that because i have this huge stash of notebooks and i also have pens and stickers and just everything i literally don't need to buy anything up until july because i have everything i could ever need to journal and plan and make whatever craft i want and just to be clear, I didn't buy all of these notebooks all at once. This is years and years worth of accumulation. And how I got to this point isn't really relevant. My reasons aren't very unique. I didn't want to deal with stress and anxiety and negative emotions. I didn't want to confront them. I didn't want to deal with them. I didn't know how to cope with those feelings in a healthy manner. And so I self-suited with shopping. That's the short version of it. And I realized that now. So at this point, I'm just going to be using all of these notebooks for journaling and planning. Last year, I did finish 23 notebooks, so I feel like with that in mind, 76 isn't a very high number. But I do have a lot of very thick notebooks here. I'm just going to focus on using up this stash before I buy anything new. I am excited for this project. I know it's going to take me several years to get through, but I feel like that is good for me. I'm up for the challenge. This is something that's going to keep me occupied and it's going to give me a little bit of purpose. So I think that will help me in curbing my spending habits if I have a clear goal in mind that's going to take me some time to get through. So yeah, let's just go through my blank notebooks while we're here. So I'm gonna go through my partially filled notebooks and then we'll slowly go through this pile here. So I have four notebooks here that I've already filled up. I have my passport size art journal from last year that I really did want to fill up with art spreads, but it just never happened. I was too busy and then I never really picked this back up. So I've accepted that art journaling isn't for me right now. So I'm going to be using this as a regular journal going forward. Same with my gaming journal. This is a notebook therapy Tuki bullet journal in their original size. So this is smaller than an A5. Let me see if I can pull one up for you. So this is the Hobonichi A5 notebook and it is smaller. And I did also fill this up already with my title page here. And then I have my index page and then 
nothing. I never jump back into this, which does make me feel sad because I really do want to start a cleaning journal. I just haven't had the time. I have my regular journal already and by the time I'm done, I'm tired and I want to go to sleep. So this just got ignored. I'm holding up hope that I can catch up with this journal. But if not, I'll just go ahead and repurpose this as a regular journal too. And then this is my current journal that I did add to the pile because this was blank when I started the year. This is my Moleskine pocket journal. It's a soft cover. I don't really have much to say about this right now. The paper isn't very good for fountain pen, but that's okay. So there's that. I also counted my Hobonichi weeks for this year. I count my planners with my notebook stash as well. So I'm not going on a total no buy for notebooks this year. I am planning on buying the 2024 Hobonichi weeks later in September. But here it is. I'm already using it. I'm filling it up and I have no plans on switching this year. And if I were to switch planners, I'm probably going to use a notebook that I already have rather than buying something new. Oh, and I also have my A5 Rhodia notebook. I also wanted to use this as an A5 art journal. And again, I made a few spreads and then nothing. <laughs> so once again, this is just going to be turned into a regular journal somewhere down the line. I really do want to be able to use a journal for art spreads and collaging, but I just don't have the time right now. And the last of my partially filled book is this. This is a five year journal and I intended to use this for my son's baby journal. But at the time, I didn't really like this format. He was born in the middle of the year and it wasn't very comfortable for me to use. And I felt like this format didn't really work out for me. I wanted to be able to put in pictures and I couldn't do that with this. So I decided to set this aside and I do plan on using this in the future. I'm just going to white out all of the entries that I already filled in. I used this for two or three weeks. So not a lot of entries in here. I'm just going to take a white out and write over it by the time I get to this five year journal. I haven't started this yet since I do use a regular journal. So I'm thinking once I make a dent in my stash and maybe I get busier as my life changes, I'll probably end up with a five year journal eventually. But for now, this is just sitting in my stash. All right, so those were all of my partially filled notebooks. All of these are completely blank. I haven't used them. Some of them I haven't even opened yet. I might have some pen tests in the back for some of them, but otherwise I haven't used them for journaling, planning, nothing. So completely blank for me. And I'm just gonna start on this side and we'll work our way this way. So I have these two Moleskine limited edition Sakura notebooks and I haven't even taken out the packaging. So these are brand new. I do want to use these. I love the covers and they're just so pretty, but, but these two were one of those things where I felt like they were too special or pretty to use. And then what happened? They just sat in my box for years and years and I never looked at them. So going forward, I'm just going to go ahead and use all of my notebooks. No excuses. Let's just use them. And I find notebooks to be way more interesting when they're used and filled up and not just sitting blank in storage. And then here's a set of beautiful notebooks. Two of them are unopened yet again. So these are notebooks from Saks Fifth Avenue. I believe these were membership rewards, but when I saw this online, I fell in love with the covers. So I found them on eBay for a really good price and I got all three colors. Why? I don't know. I was in a collector's hoarding mindset for a good number of years. And I felt like if they were reasonably priced, I wanted to have them all. And that's what happened with these notebooks. And they have these beautiful gilded edges. So this one is gold. The black one is also gold. And I love the designs on the covers. And it is lined on the inside, which is fine for me. There's some illustrations on some of the pages as you see. This is just such a gorgeous notebook. And I do want to use these. I don't want to just donate them or destash them. So I do plan on using these in the future. And the next I have these personal ring binders that I bought on AliExpress. Look how cute these are. So this one is cherry blossom themed. And then this one has a really cute bow in the front. They do have inserts in them. And I did want to use these as journals in the past. And then once again, I never got to them for one reason or another. But I just love how cute these designs are. So I've never journaled in a personal rings binder before. So that would be an interesting experience once I get to these notebooks. And then these two are from Peter Popper Press. I have this weird thing with notebooks where I can't have just one. I have to have at least two. I need them in pairs. I don't know why. That's just a compulsion that I have. And it's one of those things where you just 
question why you behave this way <laughs> but i do so you're going to notice that i have pairs for some of them i don't want them to just be single and lonely <laughs> but i do love the covers on these two they're both so gorgeous and again i felt like they were too pretty to use i don't want to ruin them but it's not like these are rare limited edition notebooks you can buy these on amazon barnes and noble these are mass-produced notebooks. These are not special. You can get these anywhere. So I'm trying to change my mentality with my pretty notebooks. These aren't super special. They're not expensive. If something were to happen, I can easily buy these again. So let's just use them. All right, up next, I have some A5 Hobonichi notebooks here. So when I read the news that the original Tomoe River paper was going away, I panicked and ended up stocking up on the original Tomoe River notebooks. So I have three A5 Hobonichi notebooks in here. So these are all the original Tomoe River notebooks. I'm starting to feel like I should use these for something special. Once again, that mindset of it's too pretty to use, it's too special to use. Now that the original Tomoe River paper is gone, I'm like, I need a good reason to use these notebooks. And again, that's a ridiculous mindset to have because what is going to be the right time to use these notebooks, right? They're just paper. Same with my Cafe Notes notebooks. I have two B6 Slims and two A5 notebooks. And the A5 ones are the second edition Tomoe River before they switch to the Sanzen edition. The B6 Slim is also the new edition, but I don't know, I just want to have these for one reason or another. I think it was because sometime last year I was thinking of switching to an A5 bullet journal. And so I thought, let's use the Nanami notebooks as my bullet journal and then that didn't happen i stuck with hobonichi week so i decided to set these notebooks aside i do want to use them sometime i don't want to just destash them as well so all of these are notebooks that i chose to keep i'm not interested in getting rid of them at the moment so i do want to use them in the future and then over here i have two exceed notebooks from walmart so i don't just have expensive notebooks i have cheap notebooks as well and these two are pocket size from exceed which is the Moleskine Dupe by Walmart. And then I have another hardcover Moleskine notebook here, which is pocket size. I already did a pen test in the back and the paper isn't as bad as the one that I'm currently using. So slightly more fountain pen friendly paper. This does have a blue quality sticker, which is rumored to have better paper than the others. So I can't speak to that, but there you go. And then I have these two Hobonichi Week's Kinbor grid notebook. So this isn't a planner. This is just grid. All of it is grid. And I just wanted to see how this was like. And that's why I bought them. And they perfectly fit my AliExpress clear covers too. I wanted to use this cover for my Hobonichi Week's this year, but it didn't work out. The fit wasn't really right. And I had a hard time putting this in my letter covers. So it's housing my grid notebook instead. So it's also 3.8 millimeter grid, just like Hobonichi Week. So if you're looking to bullet journal in this size, this is a really good option. So I'm also going to be using this either for journaling or planning in the future. All right, and then I have three Traveler's Notebook inserts here, passport size. These are freebies that I got from a Traveler's Notebook I bought on AliExpress. So I got these for free. A majority of my inserts I got for free and they do add to my stash, which I'm not happy about. So I ended up de-stashing a lot of my free inserts but I kept these because the covers were really pretty. And then I have these three from Daiso. So they come in packs of three. I actually have an unopened pack here. I have two of them. I had way more of these and I decided to just start gifting them to friends and family. And then here I have another week size notebook and this one actually is a planner. So it's got weekly pages in it. This one is also a Kinbor brand. And this one came free with a zipper cover that I bought on AliExpress. I ended up gifting that cover to my mother-in-law and then I got stuck with this so <laughs> it's craziness I tell you why did I do that when you reflect on these things you're just like why why did you do that but anyway yeah I have this planner that I can just date if I want it's completely undated what I'm thinking is next year I'm going to buy the Hobonichi Weeks 2024 because it's still going to have the original Tomoe River as well and I am trying to stock up on that as much as I can within reason and then once they switch to the Sanzen version, I'm probably gonna use this, but I just wanna keep a stock of the original one. <laughs> that is my mentality, so I'm allowing myself that at least. And then here are some Hobonichi supplement inserts for the A6 notebook, and 
I actually got this from a set. I wanted the A6 pencil board and I couldn't find it anywhere except on Amazon. And on Amazon, it came in a set. There was the pencil board and then these inserts. So I decided to just buy the whole thing. And that's why I ended up with these, even though I don't use A6, but that's okay. And then over here, I have even more passport size notebooks and A6 size as well. I have three Penco B7 notebooks. These are 200 pages each and they're grid on the inside. I think I have a pen test in here. Yes. So here's the pen test. The paper's pretty good. So this is a good option if you're looking for a notebook that you can just stash in your pocket. I have two Galen Leather Tomoe River inserts as well. This is the original Tomoe River paper and I bought these way before they announced that they were changing up the formula of the paper. I actually have three of these. I can't find the other one, but once I do, that's gonna add to my stash. But for now, I'm not counting it until I find it. Another Tomoe River FP brand notebook. This is also the original edition of the paper. I've already used one of these in the past and I really enjoy journaling in this. It's not too thick, so I think this is the perfect size for me for journaling. I have some more cafe notes in here. I think this is the original version. Or is it? Oh no, it's the second edition, Tomoe River. So why did I buy this then? I don't know why. I think I just wanted to try every size they have. I have three more of the A6 Hobonichi notebooks as well. Once again, just trying to hoard as much of the original paper as I could. All right, so let me set those aside to make room here. Next, I have these notebooks. These I bought on Barnes & Noble. These are the Chiltern classic notebooks. So Chiltern publishes classic books in these kinds of covers and they're really beautiful, but they have the journal version of those notebooks. So they are lined and the paper isn't that good, I don't think. So I did do a pen test in this one and the bleed through, it's not bad, could be worse, but not great either. I'll probably just use gel pens for these, but that's fine. So I have two of those, cause again, they have to be a pair. And then this one, I only have one of, but this is the mini happy planner notebook. So it's just notes on the inside. And I also have some extra inserts here in the back from a, another happy planner that I purchased a long time ago. And these are undated, so I can kind of use these as journal prompts if I want to. That's probably what I'm gonna do once I get to this notebook. Another Rodia A5 notebook that is unopened. Packaging is still intact. Another set of Hobonichi Weeks supplements. So I shared this in a haul a long time ago and I haven't used them yet. So I'm probably going to use these as a supplement to my planners going forward whenever I need them. So these are just on standby until I need them. I have two of the Cosmo Air notebooks that I bought on jet pens because they're getting discontinued. I saw that news last year and then I panic bought these two because I didn't want to miss out on this paper. Yep, I also fell prey to FOMO and that's why I have these. So I also get influenced and I also have fear of missing out. So that's why I ended up with the stash I have three of the Galen Leather inserts for the Standard Traveler's Notebook. And I did already do a pen test in the back. I believe this is the second edition, Tomoe River as well. So I find that the sheening on the second edition isn't as good as the original. So that also prompted me to stock up on the original version as much as I could. But I do love the Standard Traveler's Notebook size. So I will be using these for journaling one of these days. And then I have another Notebook Therapy Tsuki Bullet Journal in their original size. So. These two are pairs. Again, why do I need to buy two of them? Your guess is as good as mine. Let me clear out this area and I'll bring these notebooks closer for us to see. All right, so these are the last of my stash. These are all hardcover A5 notebooks because I had it in my head that I'm just going to bullet journal going forward. And so at my lowest point, I ended up hoarding a lot of A5 notebooks. <sighs> all right, so. Let's just go through them. I have two of the new Leuchtturm 120 GSM notebooks. And I actually do like this notebook. I did a quick pen test in the back and I like it. There's not much smearing, which is good. So I think I wanted to use this as my bullet journal originally. And then I decided to stick to Hobonichi Weeks. And then here we go. This is the worst of it. I have nine notebook therapy A5 journals. Oh, why? <laughs> this is what I would say was the height of my problem, my addiction. I do liken my notebook hoarding to an addiction because I wasn't acting out of logic. I was doing a lot of emotional spending. I remember 
being at a pretty low point when I was buying all of these and I was definitely using shopping as a way to cope with my emotions at the time. So that's how I ended up with nine and I do like these notebooks. They're really pretty. I love the covers. So I don't plan on de-stashing them at the moment. I'm just going to find a way to use them. So let's take a look at the covers on the inside, shall we? This one's the Ocean Edition notebook. It has this really nice textured vegan cover. This one was their Moon Rabbit notebook. And I think this was limited edition or it's discontinued or something like that. One thing that really got me with these notebooks is I kept getting the emails that was like, hurry, these aren't coming back, discontinued soon, you know, those kinds of emails. I did fall for those emails. And so a lot of these I would say were from those kinds of emails. Right? So I have since unsubscribed from all of those retail emails or I've learned to ignore them because they weren't good for me. So here's another one. This was their summer collection. And I also received an email about these that were like, hurry, these aren't coming back. So I definitely fell prey to that artificial scarcity tactic that companies like to use. And I'm not targeting notebook therapy specifically because lots of companies do that where they offer limited stock and there's only so much they can sell and you feel FOMO if you don't get that item because you don't know when it's going to be back. I'm just saying that with notebook therapy, I really spiraled into that situation. I don't know why I hyper fixated on them so much. I really can't tell you like that entire period of my life was just a blur and there was no thought to it. I wasn't thinking. If you asked me what I was thinking, I wasn't. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, let's take a look at this one. Oh, this is the teacup edition. How cute is this? I really like the galaxy aesthetic too. And I do love tea and coffee. So I feel like this notebook does identify with me. Ah, the butterfly edition. You know, the funny thing, I forgot that I have this. I was aware that I have nine of these notebooks, but if you were to ask me what the covers were specifically, I couldn't tell you. That's wild to think about. These are the kind of lessons that you learn once you stop and just take a good hard look at what you already have and how you've been behaving and spending your money and all that. Unless you put everything in front of you, you don't really know. You don't have a good gauge of what's just been sitting in your closet. So that was a really big lesson for me when we were moving last year and I had to pack and organize all of our things. We just had way too much. I definitely feel that way with my notebooks as well. Here's another summer edition notebook in light blue. All right, let's see what this cover is. Oh, this is another ocean edition cover. I love these. So this is the black cover, which I do like. All right, down to the last two. This one's another ocean edition notebook and I love this one. It's a navy blue textured cover as well. And the stamping here is gold. It's so pretty. I love this. And then what is this last one? I can't even tell you. I don't know. <laughs> we'll both be surprised. Oh, this is the Nara edition. I think is what it's called. So this one's brown. This one's really pretty actually. I really like this one. This is just part of my stash, but look at this ridiculousness. Our storage closet is a warehouse. <laughs> so those are all of my blank notebooks. I forgot to count my son's A6 Stalogy journal. So I gave him a notebook for my stash to use for his baby journal. I'll put a picture here of what it looks like, but all of those total up to 76 blank notebooks. So whew, that is a lot. And even if I were to journal consistently and frequently and fill up a lot of notebooks this year, it's still going to take me years to go through my stash, which again, I am up for the challenge. Despite everything, I'm excited to see how my progress is going to be and how well I do. I don't know if I'm going on a total notebook no buy after July. That's something that I will have to review once the time comes, but definitely for the next five months, I'm not going to be buying anything. All right, let me just make some room here. So my plan this year is to go through my smaller notebooks. So I'm thinking once I fill up my pocket moleskin here, I'm going to be moving into my Passport Traveler's Notebook again, which I do miss. I love my Passport Traveler's Notebook and I haven't been using them. So here's my chance. I'm going to be going through my inserts this year. Just get these out of the way. And then I also want to use my hardcover pocket notebooks this year. I've never used the pocket size exceed before. I do have the large size that I use as a bullet journal in the past, but I'm excited to use these. And then depending on how well I do, I'm also thinking of maybe using these as journals. 
I'm not sure. We'll see. These are pretty thick and the grid sizing is very small. So it's going to take me a while to get through these. So these two are still up in the air, but definitely these notebooks are going to be my focus for the year. Just setting small goals for myself because looking at my entire notebook stash, that can be overwhelming. And let's say I finished 10 notebooks this year and that's a good journaling year for me. And I look at my stash and I'll feel like, oh, I still have 66 notebooks left. That can be discouraging. So I'm just setting small goals for myself and just focusing on these for now. And then I'll take a look at my stash once I'm through with these. So that is my plan of action. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening to me. If you have any comments, I would love to hear them. If you also have a large stash or maybe you're going through the same thing as I am. Maybe you feel like what I did was crazy, which I agree with you. <laughs> but the important thing is that I admitted that I have a problem and I'm doing something about it and I am correcting my behavior. So that is going to be my journey going forward, my zero stash journey. So I'm really excited, like I said, and yeah, I'm exhausted. I'm gonna clean this up and go to bed. So thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. This is Baba Notes and I'll see you next time. Bye.